Hi folks, Chucks here. Today we're going to be looking at the Z Fold camera. What you can do with it, what are some of the tips, and also look at some of the samples from the different cameras you have in your Z Fold 4. Yeah, there are lots of cameras. To start with, your cover screen has a 10 megapixel selfie camera. Your main screen has a 4 megapixel under display camera. And when you look at the back of your Z Fold 4, it houses three cameras, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 10 megapixel telephoto camera, and a 50 megapixel main camera. So that 50 megapixel main camera is a huge upgrade from what we had with the Z Fold 3 12 megapixel main camera. So Samsung has packed a lot of camera specs in this to make your camera experience, whether that be taking photos or videos, to be worthwhile when you're using the Z Fold 4. So let's go look at some of the tips and also some of the samples of how the video and photos look with your Z Fold 4. Let's start with the simple tip, which is launching the camera in your Z Fold 4. There are two ways to launch the camera. Of course, you can go and open the camera app and that will launch the camera app from the app library. Or you can configure your power button double press to open the camera. Here is how you set that up. If you go into settings and then scroll down to advanced features and then you tap on side key, here you have the option what to do when you double press the side key, which is the power button. And then you can configure it to open the camera or any other app that you want to open. Here I have set it up to quick launch the camera. So whenever I now double press the side key, the camera will launch quickly. And this works even when your uh, Z Fold 4 is folded with the cover screen and locked. So the camera will open. And since this side key also functions as your fingerprint scanner and fingerprint sensor, it can also detect that and unlock as you open the camera. So there are a lot of different ways now you can consider opening the camera, not just by opening the camera app from the app library. Okay, moving on, let's look at some of the camera settings and, and how you get to the different camera modes you have on your camera app. So launching the camera app, you will notice at the bottom you have a lot of modes, right? There is the portrait mode, there's a photo mode, there's a night mode, video mode, portrait mode. And if you keep scrolling, you're gonna have the option to tap on more. Here, you will see all of the available modes for your camera app. And to choose one, you can just tap on one of those modes and that will switch to that camera mode or a video mode. And if you go back, and then if you tap on more, you will be able to also drag and drop one of those modes and place it in the bottom bar for you to easily be accessible. So for example, if I like to have the pro mode available, I can drag and drop and then place it in the bottom. And the other thing I can do here is I can also move around and rearrange the order of this bottom bar. So for example, let me move the portrait video so I can just drag, touch and hold, and then drag to the desired location I want to, and then drop it there. So now I have a customized version of that bottom bar in the way that I want to with my needs. So this is really nice way to either declutter or have all of the modes available here at fingertip. So it's up to you how you want to configure, but this is something um, that is I always use in pretty much every Samsung phone, right? Because this is a standard feature in the Samsung camera app. Now, the few options you get that are very specific to the Z Fold experience, whether that be the Z Fold 2, three or four is some of the ways how you can actually use the device itself to capture videos and photos, right? And of course we have this beautiful main screen where we can use the entire main screen as the viewfinder, like what I'm doing right now. On the top bar where you have the settings, flash, timer, you know, the aspect ratio, you have the last button. If you tap on that, it shows you 
that the cover screen preview is on. What it does is it actually enables you to use the rear camera and also use the cover screen as the preview of what you see from your rear camera, right? Which is pretty cool. So now you can actually use the cover screen as a preview and turn around your camera and then use it to record yourself, right? And, and this is pretty neat. You don't have to now uh, use the selfie camera. You can use the rear camera and see the preview on the cover screen. Now, this is not as good. So what Samsung made is it went one step further. And if you look at your cover screen, you'll actually have the button called selfie. If you tap on that, that actually now uses the selfie mode, but using the rear cameras, and it brings all of the controls, like adjusting the, um, the different settings and switching to different modes right here on the cover screen, but it still uses your rear camera. So that's one of the settings that you have here. You get this because you're using the Z Fold experience. If you're using the normal S22 Ultra, you don't get this experience, right? Which is something very specific to the Z Fold. Now there's also the flex mode. If I put my device into flex mode, you can see the camera viewfinder goes to the top and my controls come at the bottom. So now I can actually place this on a surface and start recording or take a photo. It's that simple. You don't need a tripod, right? And it just makes it easier for me to uh, now have the controls at a reachable place and accessible. And the viewfinder being at the top, I don't have to worry about that at all. So that's the flex mode. Now, there is a button on the top left. If you tap on that, it enables the dual view, wherein the left hand side of the screen becomes your place where you preview all of the shots and the right side of your screen becomes the viewfinder. So another way to capture videos and photos, right? Because that's something you get very specific to the Z Fold experience. And again, you don't get this in the S22 or S22 Ultra, right? There are these options just make it easier for us to focus on what we want to do with the device. And when you have such a big screen, well, let's make use of it, right? Now, if you use the cover screen, you can get the same cover view experience where if you fold partially, you can, now you can actually place the Z Fold on a surface and use the main screen camera to record your video or snap a selfie, right? So that's also possible with the selfie camera from the cover screen. Really cool options here that Samsung has enabled, taking advantage of the device form factor. Hi everyone, this is a clip from the Z Fold 4 cover screen selfie camera and right now I'm recording in 4k 30 frames per second it's a 10 megapixel camera and it can up to record 4k 60 frames per second so this is the preview so this is how you would get with the selfie camera on the cover screen and with the inbuilt microphone and I'm actually using the cover view mode so I have placed my Z Fold 4 on a stable surface and I'm hands-free right now and the cover screen is open towards me bringing that L shape which is a flex mode right but which is now using the cover screen instead of the main screen so that's why it's called the cover view to record this clip. I don't need a tripod I just need to find a stable surface and I'm good to go right and that's the beauty of this folding device the Z Fold 4 using the cover screen main camera. Now, of course, there are other few settings that I would want to go through here, which I think are very useful. If you open the camera app and now, depending on the mode that you have selected here, for example, right now I've selected the photo mode. On the top bar, you have the settings button along with other options, right? Notice we have the aspect ratio 4 to 3. Tap on that, you're actually going to get a 4 to 350 megapixel option. So this 50 megapixel 
is going to use the rear camera's 50 megapixel. Right now, the default is to use the 12 megapixel output from the 50 megapixel camera. Sometimes you need to do that to save space and Samsung does optimize a lot with a process called binning that it takes all of the details from the 50 megapixel and then reduces it to much more compressed 12 megapixel output. That does save a lot of space, right? But if you want the detail and if you want the powerful 50 megapixel output, you can tap on the aspect ratio 4 to 3 and then select the 4 to 3 50 megapixel. And at the bottom on the sidebar where you have the zoom option, you have the detail enhancer button. That detail enhancer button, when you enable it, it's going to use the full power of the 50 megapixel and give you a very high resolution image. With that, you can get a lot of detail if you zoom in and do things, right? And now, if you take a photo, that's going to take the 50 megapixel output and you can already see it's taking quite some time to generate that image. And this will be the 50 megapixel output. And if you zoom in, you can, you can see how detail rich the photo is with this 50 megapixel option. So that's how you enable the 50 megapixel option. Okay, so this is from the four megapixel under the display camera found on your main screen. So this is a selfie camera you get on the main screen. Now, this isn't as good as the selfie camera you get on the cover screen. It's just four megapixel and it's a new technology, right? It's under the display. So, you know, the quality is going to be much lower. And again, like I'm here in bright daylight and I'm actually not sure how this camera is capturing me with this light and adjusting the contrast. So something to look at whether you really need to use this. Like I think in broad lighting conditions, you can certainly use this for conference calls, but not probably for uh, other things that you can do. Like, you know, I'm not going to record a full fledged video with this camera, but again, here I'm using the flex mode, the main screen flex mode, where I can actually, you know, partially fold my Z Fold 4, leave it in that L position and then keep it on a stable surface and I'm hands free right now and I can actually record my video, right? That's the beauty of the flex mode. But this is using the main screen 4 megapixel camera with the inbuilt microphone. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the tips. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. There's going to be a lot of videos coming on this Z Fold 4 and also the Z Flip 4, which I still haven't started reviewing it and looking at all the awesome things you can do with it. But if you want to know all the tips and tricks and the things you could do with the Z Fold 4 and Z Flip 4 and even the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to get notified when those videos go live. Now, back to the video. Now, if we go into settings, but there are a few things that I want to highlight here that I think makes sense for you to look at and enable it when you set up your Z Fold 4. So, the first one is picture format. Here, you can enable the high efficiency picture format. This will save space again. It moves away from using JPEG and PNG format and it uses the high efficiency image format. Many of the services understand this, so um, you shouldn't be worrying about whether if I upload it to Google Photos, for example, will my photos be uh, recognizable and can I see them in Google Photos? Of course, many services and many apps now support this format. I would recommend you to turn it on so you can actually save space. There is the option to enable raw copy. If you are someone that is going to do post-processing and use the pro mode in your camera app, then you can enable the raw format here. The other option here that is going to help you a lot is the grid lines. If you enable the grid lines, you can now align your photo or video to be to a straight line or even to make the subject three by fourth, which is the perfect angle to shoot a subject. All of those things, you can actually uh, get it done using the grid lines. Shooting methods, this is very interesting right? You can use several ways to um, shoot 
or a photo or start shooting a video. You can of course use the shutter button or you can press volume keys to take picture or record video or you can also configure it to zoom in and zoom out, right? And then you can use voice commands. This is very cool. You can actually say smile, cheese, and that will actually capture. And along with that, you also have the show palm. So you just show your palm like this and then that will take the video. Let's look at an example here. Let me show you how this works. So here I am on my selfie camera and I'm going to show my palm and that's going to take a selfie. And I'm going to just going to say cheese and that took a selfie as well, right? And it's very useful if you're using a tripod and you want to just snap the photo hands-free, you can use these different shooting methods, voice commands and show palm uh, to take that photo. So really cool ways here. The rest of the settings are um, very specific to photo here because we are in the photo mode. Now if you switch to video and then tap on settings, you will notice that you have video options which allows you to now uh, have auto frames per second. You can enable that automatically or you can choose from the settings. You also have the option to enable video stabilization and same as we did for the high efficiency image format, you have the high efficiency video format. So if you enable that, that will also uh, save a lot of space on your uh, disk, which is your storage here on your phone. We also have the zoom in microphone. The zoom in microphone is basically uh, when you focus on a subject and if there is audio coming from that subject and this as you zoom in will amplify the audio as well. So it captures as if like you're actually going near the subject and going far away from the subject. This is used a lot in the auto framing option and when you auto frame and place a subject and track a subject, uh, this zoom in microphone actually allows you to also have the audio get amplified. This is a great feature available in the Samsung camera app for videos, which is auto framing. What auto framing does is it allows you to track the subject. Like right now, if you see as I'm moving, it is tracking my face and also adjusting the camera angle as I move. So it basically zooms in and out with the subject being the keyframe. And it's really good. This actually records pretty well, but it actually records in the 1080p 30 frames per second. It does not record these in 4K. So that's something to think about when you are looking to do the auto framing. It's available both in the cover screen selfie camera and the rear camera video recording. It actually changes to using the ultra wide camera when you use the rear cameras and the quality there is a little bit down but I hope this quality actually is much better than that um, but you can judge it from this video and, and this is the auto framing that I'm talking about it is able to zoom in and out as I move in and out of the frame now of course if you're on the video mode on the top bar you can tap on that uhd or you know the fhd that you would see normally if you haven't changed that setting to change the video recording format resolution you can have up to 8k 24 frames per second but remember 8k is going to eat up a lot of space so i would recommend shooting in uhd 4k 30 frames per second if you want a stellar quality uh, that you can um, share with your friends and family and of course you can downgrade to the full high definition 60 frames per second and you're still going to have a good quality um, taken out from the 50 megapixel main camera um, and of course if you switch to the portrait mode that uses the telephoto lens which is just 10 megapixel and really not enjoying the output from this portrait lens but the option is there if you switch to the 1x portrait zoom that is actually using the 50 megapixel camera so um, if you want better quality I would suggest using that 1x portrait zoom. If you want the 3x optical zoom portrait photo, then you have that option. This is a good segue into looking at how to zoom in and zoom out. It's very easy once you know how to do it. If you tap on the 1x, 
which is the default zoom, you'll actually get the different zoom levels. And you can actually zoom up to 30x digital zoom, right? The quality is not going to be great, but you can do it. If you tap on 30x again, you can go back to 20, you can go back to 10, you know, four different uh, points that Samsung has used here in the camera UX. If you touch and hold the zoom option, which is 1x, 2x, 3x, now you can actually drag down and up to zoom in, zoom out, and that also works. So you don't have to rely on tapping on the different zoom level buttons. Just use your thumb to drag uh, down and up to zoom out and zoom in, right? Very simple way to adjust the zoom. Now this zoom only works if you use the standard uh, resolution without the 50 megapixel and detail enhancer. If you use the 50 megapixel camera, which here we have changed to, you can only zoom up to 6x digital zoom, right? You can't go beyond that. So that's something that Samsung has limited. Maybe it's a limitation in the hardware, but that's, how, that's what you get with the zoom option with the 50 megapixel camera. So we are on a roll here. Now we are recording from the rear main camera. Now, this is a great upgrade to the Z Fold 4 from Z Fold 3 because Z Fold 3 camera system was mediocre. But with this 48 megapixel camera, you're going to get really high resolution images. And also it supports up to 8K recording. Right now I'm recording in 4K 30 frames per second and with the inbuilt microphone, but you can record up to 8K if you want to. So those were some of the settings I recommend enabling in your camera setup in Z Fold 4. Now, if this is your first Samsung phone, take some time. There are a lot of settings, especially the Pro mode, right? And to understand the Pro mode and to uh, get to know all of the different parameters used in the Pro mode, I'm planning to have another video just focused on the Pro mode. So let me know in the comments if you're interested in that video. And let me know what you think about the Z Fold 4 camera setup. Is it good? Is it good enough to keep your Z Fold 4 as your primary device and use the camera? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, bye.